going on out there in YouTube land? Today we are with a fellow Burke boy and Albuquerque kid in the house, Alex Bregman, World Series champion, two-time All-Star, winner of the Silver Slugger Award. Man, you got a pretty good resume on you. First round draft pick. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, also the guy that has Breggy Bomb salsa right here. Uh, we're gonna be trying the hottest sauce later on. We're gonna see if it lives up to New Mexico standards. So that'll be in the link below. Make sure you guys snag you some of that. Uh, assuming I okay it afterwards. But, yeah, we got to get his rating first. You know, like, don't don't trust me. See what Bo said. You know, he, he moved away from home now, so you know his his taste may have dropped off a little bit as, bar, as far as his ability to handle Scovilles. You know, mm -hmm. I'm still in the dirt. I'm still in the 505, so I can give you a pretty accurate representation about how that salsa is. We'll see if it's 505 approved. We'll see. I think it's gonna be, but we'll see. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of work with him today. Just work on some trigger points. Um, get, he's got a big season coming up. Just signed a contract last year? Uh, two years ago. So two you're an Astro ago. for life basically now, yeah? Almost, yeah. Pretty three, I got three more years left on this, on this deal, so hopefully we can uh, continue to uh, win and, and keep going. Uh, maybe win another one or two World Series in that, in that time. He's going to go for the Brady uh, yeah. two-hand. The two-hand ring picture. Maybe, maybe y'all can crop that onto the photo. For the thumbnail. Yeah. He's coming thumbnail. for you, Tom. <laughs> All right. So he's a little nervous, you know. Extremely nervous when you see like tools like this, but I trust my guy. <laughs> I am f***ing nervous. Don't be scared, homie. All right. Let's jump up here. So let's go and look down first. So straight down. All right, Alex, you're an Albuquerque kid. You know, you went to Albuquerque Academy, correct? Yes. Moved on to Baton Rouge, played for LSU. Mm-hmm. Go Tigers with an X? Yes, G-E-A-U-X. There it is. And then finish up with Houston Astros. So what has it meant to you? I know you're somebody that does, you know, proudly represent your city often. And yet, like I said, you're part of Mercedes now for the salsa thing. Mm -hmm. What has that meant to you for, to be one of the, the biggest athletes that's ever come out of New Mexico? Well, it's an honor, and I love New Mexico. I think New Mexico is a uh, just an amazing place. It's a blue collar place, you know. Great, great people, hardworking people. Um, every time I go back, I feel like it's home. So, it's a it's an honor to, to do that. And growing up there, I had such great teammates like that were my age coming up through the baseball ranks that kind of took me under the wing, their wing, older guys, younger guys, guys my age that um, had the same dreams and goals of playing in the big leagues. A lot of them have, and I think uh, it's been really cool doing that. And oh my God, this is a good trigger point right here. <laughs> so who are some of the local guys you looked up to as far as baseball was concerned? So like Jordan Pacheco, um, he played in the big leagues for a while. Rockies, Diamondbacks, Reds, um, and then uh, he's coaching now, right? Yeah, he's coaching in Albuquerque actually mm -hmm. uh, for the Isotopes. Uh, Scott Gracie was another one. He pitched in the Blue Jays organization. Both those guys, when I was coming up, when I first got into pro ball, even that back to when I was in high school, college days, they would take me under their wing, and I'd be able to train with them over at Elevate. You trained over there, Bo? Yeah. 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 Um, we go train over there and those dudes are such good guys. Then I grew up also with Mitchell Garver who's playing for the Twins now in the big leagues. Um, Blake Swihart who was a first round pick to the Red Sox, played in the big leagues for a while. And then, um, who else, Stroudy? Who am I missing? Tyler Stroud, my guy right there. Um, Austin House. And you were in the Royals organization, yeah? Yeah, Tyler's with the Royals. <laughs> Hang in there? Oh, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, I went to high school with Jordan Pacheco. Great dude. Um, Austin House went to La Cueva too. Yeah, they, had some ball, they had some ball clubs over there around that time. It was La Cueva teams. Max Walla was there, right. Oh, Max Walla, my high school teammate. He won the first round of the Brewers. We had a good group of guys that like came up playing at the baseball academy mm -hmm. when I was there. And- uh, ABA? Yep. Shit, Justin was my coach when I was, how old? 10. 10. <laughs> Damn, yeah. you guys go way back. Mm-hmm. Way back, you still have family in Albuquerque? Oh yeah, my dad and mom both live in Albuquerque. They are uh, attorneys in New Mexico. My dad's on the uh, horse racing commission there. So he has fun doing that kind of stuff. Nice. You know what I saw the other day? What's that? Actually, what I saw happen to one of my horses, there's horse chiropractors. Yeah. Could you, could you do that? I couldn't, but 
You have to like get special. Yeah, yeah, they have to they have to do specialization for it. But those guys make buku money, man. Yeah. I mean, you think about those those high level, you know, Preakness Kentucky Derby racehorses. What the, the money they spend on them, you know, what, what stone would you turn over to try to try to get the most out of them? Yep. You know what's crazy? What's that? You, Justin, y'all's thumb strength, man. My goodness. Like, I feel like that's crazy. Yeah. Maybe it's just like hitting the right spot. What do you think? It's both. <laughs> I mean, I think we'd probably do pretty well in like a thumb wrestling tournament. You got to get conditioned, right? Yeah. It takes a while. Yeah, it takes a while. So if you stop doing what you're doing right now and you and you and for like six months, would you lose that conditioning or would you still have it? I mean, it would definitely fade off. Yeah. So you have endurance. You have, you know, most of your strength comes from from you know neuroelasticity. So like. The most amount of strength you get right away is just from your brain learning to be more efficient with it. But over time, obviously your connective tissue gets thicker and stronger than your muscles and then eventually your bones actually get thicker and stronger too. So you get a lot more efficient, so it's a lot less tiring when you've done it for a long time. Yeah. And when even like subconscious, like confidence, like your body knows where to go eventually. Where when you first start out, you're sweating, you're spending all your energy. When you're, when you're, doing, when you're dealing with all the UFC fighters, mm -hmm. right? after a fight and they just got hit in the head a bunch, right? Mm -hmm. where, where do you, like, when you're working on their neck, is it locked up completely or is it, what do you see the most? I mean, it's, it super depends, you know, if they, if they go out and finish somebody right away, then no big deal. You know, typically what they've got to do is we've got to get them cleared by the physicians backstage. So if we think they have like, you know, subdural hematomas or, or you know, something like that, we got to get them to the hospital and, and get them MRI'd. Um, so some guys will want me, they'll feel like their neck is tight afterwards, but we, we just have to get clearance first. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a car wreck. So afterwards they're, they're real beat up, joints are stuck. Um, and then you have to be careful what you work on. Cause like what we're doing now is for tight muscles, not damaged muscles. Right? Uh, so if it's bruised, if it's kicked, if it hurts for that reason, that athlete might think it's cause it feels tight because that's a feeling they're familiar with, but this stuff actually wouldn't be very helpful at that time. Right, we just want them to move and get blood to the area and you know, it would continue to break it down. Right. So you want to do more like active recovery to help them recover from that kind of stuff as opposed to getting in here and you know, breaking up fibrosis and you know, loosening you in that sense. That's like uh, football players, bro. Like after games they they like some games if they get hit a bunch, they're like, I feel like I got in a car crash. Yeah. It's crazy. So did you go to all the LSU like home games back there? Oh yeah. Football bro. games? It's a crazy it's the, environment, huh? It's the best. Death Valley? Hundred thousand people screaming. Even like during timeouts, there's still like a buzz in the in the crowd. Saturday night's at Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. so, uh, what's it? Louisiana Saturday night. Louisiana Saturday night. Mm -hmm. That's funny. So tell me about your new home, Houston. You love it? I do. I love Houston. It's uh, dude, the the people here are awesome. Like, it's, it's a, one of the biggest cities in the United States, but the people are like do everything together they're super close-knit um, it's just like a good good feel everyone's helping each other um, food here is insane uh, the support we get um, I mean I feel like Houston's turned into a baseball city over the last five years um, I mean we've gone to the ALCS five straight years uh, played in the World Series three years and the Minute Maid Park in that dome is just insane during the postseason like it's so loud it feels like we're actually playing at death valley in front of a hundred thousand people it's just rocking like the you you watch some of the replays and uh, uh some of the big moments in the postseason it looks like literally the, like the cameras are shaking it's so loud in there ebron uh dr ho said it was like the uh superdome during uh like when the saints are good yeah like how loud it gets down there like how it registers on the uh is it called the Richter scale? The Richter scale, yeah. yeah. So he's like, dude, it's that loud. Wow. But Houston's great, man. I, I love it here. Yeah. Everyone, everyone from Albuquerque, like my, like my, my team mm -hmm. that has moved here. Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone loves it. Like you love it. I love it. You like it already, Justin? I love it. Yeah, it's it's a good spot. There you go. So I love in the room. Columbia. We have we have a lot of Albuquerque. Uh, our whole team's basically from Albuquerque besides Will. Will's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So you guys are stealing all the talent from our state, man. Yep. Jason, my hitting coach, he lives in Katy, like 30 minutes away. Okay. He moved in 
2016, 17. He loves, he loves it. Yeah, I used to, I lived in Dallas for like seven years, but we would come down here for work all the time back then. So Houston and Dallas are, have a lot of similarities, man. Like, I love them too. Uh, a little bougie, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but I actually like that. Dallas? Both, the way people dress, you know, nice oh. restaurants, all that kind of stuff. I'm a fan. Some people don't, they want to, you know, spend their time in Austin or those kind of places. I don't know, I like a nice restaurant, I like a nice suit, you know. That's why Tyler fits in good, if you can show him well. Cause, cause he's fancy him, like that. Him. Oh, he's just bougie. Bougie? <laughs> yeah. Like Derek Lewis, <laughs> bougie. So people will be watching this after the fact, but you got any predictions for tonight's fight? Yeah. What do you got? I got, um, I actually got, in the co-main, I got Derek Lewis. I think, I think Ty's gonna try and throw with him. And I think that's kind of what Derek wants. Yeah, it's not a game that many people can win. No. Standing in the pocket with the Black Beast. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. Um, and then uh, in, the, in the main event, I just think like in sports, it's so hard to beat somebody twice, right? Yeah. Especially like at the, top of the, at, the, at the top of the food chain. And I think Whitaker's going to win. He's calling the upset, huh? I am. I think Whitaker's going to win. I know Izzy's insane. He's the, now the second highest paid fighter in the game. And allegedly. I love his game. Yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. I, I, love, I love his game. I love what he, what he does, but... So who are your favorite fighters then? I got a, a long list of <laughs> favorites. Um, I think grow, I think just bringing excitement to the sport. I love McGregor since he came into he came into MMA. Like I, I I've loved him the whole time. Um, I also like Poirier, Louisiana guy. Um, I think that whole division is probably the most fun to watch in in the UFC. But uh, I mean, now Oliver is nasty. Um, I like Michael Chandler; he's fun to watch. Um, but then you go you go into the the big boys. I like I mean I like John. I like um, Stipe. I like Cormier now. I, think yeah. you know, I like all the guys <laughs> to be honest with you. I love Sugar Sean, bro. I think Sugar Sean is. You're a Sugar Sean fan? He's too fun to watch. He's okay. so fun to watch, and everyone's like, oh, he hasn't fought nobody, he hasn't fought nobody. Bro, he is it's coming. knocking people out. They were going to get a world championship out of him? <sighs> it's tough division, too. I uh, know. Peter Jan's insane. I think, I don't know. I, I that'd, probably be, that'd be entertaining. It would be. That'd be a good fight. Let's do this. Bring both arms up like that as far as you can. Like this? Yeah. How does it feel? About the same? Right a little tighter? You do this to me. Does this look better or worse than normal? That looks better. Yeah, it looks way better. Cool. Alright, so let's throw right here again. Just gonna grab some underside stuff. You're doing a lot of like Y's and T's and all that kind of. Mm hmm. Go in and out like that for me. I'm okay. gonna hook you right there. This is the one that crushed the island boy. Yeah. <laughs> See, we're built different than the island boy. You know, Brookie <laughs> Wizard. <laughs> Built different. different than the island boy. <laughs> Gonna get my back cracked. <laughs> hey, the funniest thing they did, I don't know if you saw this on uh, YouTube or not. Uh, they they got a cameo and uh, some some dude asked them to quit the, quit the, his job for him. Cameo. <laughs> <laughs> they were rapping like, <laughs> yeah, he's done. I'm out. I, I'm, I quit. That's tremendous. It's hilarious. That is tremendous. What'd be more funny is if like uh, like in, in campaign season coming up if people started like Oh my god. You get island boys doing uh, uh, campaign ads <laughs> for your school board elections. <laughs> that would be hilarious. A little tired there? Yeah, a little bit. Right on. Yeah. That's honestly where I feel it a little bit sometimes. Go like this for me, stick your palm out. Hold. Come on, push it down. Yeah, solid. And then let's go ahead and take that right arm and keep reaching straight back with it. Keep going back. Keep going. A little further. Go a little, little more. A little more. A little more. Now take that right arm and reach down just a little bit with it. Good. 
You playing shortstop this year? No, third. third. Still third. Mm -hmm. So the, I'm hoping, I'm holding out hope that we still re-sign Correa. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping. He's heading third. So top five third baseman of all time. My top five, I don't know. That's tough. Chipper Jones, I like Chipper. Good answer. Um, Brooks Robinson. Okay. Uh, I mean, you gotta throw, you gotta throw A-Rod in there. Yeah. Does he really count as a third baseman? I mean, yeah. A lot of homers from third base. Yeah. Uh, but I view him as a shortstop. I think Beltre was unbelievable. Um, yeah. I can't think of any old Mike Schmidt. Yeah, Adrian Beltre had like three careers, just kept having resurgences. I mean, he's amazing. I had him on my fantasy team in like 04, I think, when he had like 46 <laughs> homers. He hit 321 and had 121 RBIs. Uh, damn, he knows his stuff. <laughs> Yeah, like that's that. when I like like when you start playing against some of those guys that you grew up thinking about like watching them play It's like crazy. Yeah. It's like kind of like when you realize like holy shit, I'm in the big leagues <laughs> That's gonna be crazy. And then they hit a bunch of homers against your team and you're like damn <laughs> That's pretty funny So what's that do right there? That that, what, good. What's that do? So basically what's, what I'm feeling there is just anterior medial rotation of the humor. So I'm just pushing it down and out a little bit to create a little more space. So if we get that structural alignment better then when you're activating the posterior muscles here, you'll have better activation from it too. So bring the arms up again from the front. I run him for like as more clearance now. Yeah. Yeah. So just getting that clearance just makes the work you do a lot. A lot more efficient. Good layback in the arm. So <laughs> good yeah, motion. There, keep your chin up. Like over activation here when you're trying to do that, like a crampy feeling? No, it feels good. It just feels like that's the range. Like that's a good range for you, it feels like. Yeah, it feels like I got more range. Oh. He's usually rotated? He's usually? Yeah. You said what? I asked him if, he, if you're usually rotated. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. A bajillion twists one direction. The other the golfers too, same thing. Yep. Those ribs. Big deep breath. Yeah. Oh, good. Big deep breath in. And out. This time I want you to suck your belly button in towards your spine, like here. There you go. All right, good there. All right, raise this leg as high as you can. Now the other side. This feel about the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look good. No problems there. Lower back doesn't bother you? Honestly, no, not yeah. really. Just, just it needs to pop every once used, in a while. It may have used to a little bit, but not, but not really. Now you PT all the time, it's a lot better. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Uh, Perfect. Justin, what did you say? Absolutely. Yeah, he was hyping you up before he came in. He said, you know, since he's been having you more full time, just no injuries. It's awesome. Right there's a little tight? Yeah. All right. I'm going to hold that till it fades. Okay. All right, so your baseball Mount Rushmore, you get five faces on there. Does Mount Rushmore have five faces or four faces? It's got five, right? Yeah. It's five. Five. It's five. Yeah. 
All time, all position, top five. Barry Bonds. Uh, hmm. Uh, Willie Mays. Um, honestly, Mike Trout. Um, there it is. Who else? Ken Griffey. That's it. It's only four faces. It's four, four? Faces. four faces? Is it four? Yeah, those guys right there. Griffey, Bonds, Trout, and uh, Willie Mays. Four outfielders. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> All outfielders. No infielders. So, so tell me about your position on Barry Bonds in the Hall of Fame, though. I think he's got to get in. I think he's the best player of all time. Absolutely. I say the same thing. I think he's the best of all time. Controversial statement, but this is the best player of all time. Yeah. Whatever, whatever other conversations can be had, but what happened on the field? He's the best of all time. No doubt. Don't care if he had his he own said, chair in the locker room. Don't care if he was mean to the reporters. Irrelevant to me. He did what the game is doing now, like way back then like didn't strike out a lot walked a ton so he's always on base yeah um, intimidated hit a know. ton of homers man carried a roster that was pretty weak a lot of times he was insane bro. you know and when he was younger complete five tool you know 40 40 mm -hmm. insane plus you know that one 73 <laughs> season <laughs> you got walk with the bases loaded in the big leagues you're doing something right. So <laughs> you're doing something. You're the man. You're the, you're the best. You're the best. You're the best ever. Yeah. This this is an Alex in high school where they're like, all right, let's just keep walking. <laughs> no, this is in the big leagues. He's getting walk at the base loaded. So you say the same thing with Clemens then? And I think Clemens should be in. I think he's unbelievable. I think uh, yeah, man. The fact that Bonds didn't get into me nullifies the entire hall. I agree. You I know. think. What what, is ha what has to happen? I think they have to sign him to a one day contract. I think the Giants will sign him to a one day contract, and it resets that resets clock. It. clock. Yeah. So if they resign him to a one day, you have to. You he have gets to. Ten more years. That hall is useless otherwise. I agree, bro. Honestly, you know it's like in football they like they kind of penalize To a little bit. Like, what do you mean? This is the number two guy all time yards, touchdowns, everything. You didn't like that he had a sharpie in his sock. I mean. Yeah, I, I, I love T.O. I love watching What are these him. boomers talking about, man? He never did anything like... Is this, so is this not sports and entertainment, right? Why do people make a lot of money? Because people want to tune in. Why do they tune in? Guys yeah. like Ocho Cinco. Yeah. Guys like T.O. Yeah, we're here for the entertainment, for the Conor McGregor, the T.O. Like, mm -hmm. I respect the guys that are quiet, too. They just do their work, you know? But but also, at the end of the day, who are we, who are we tuning into? Nate Diaz, you know? Mm -hmm. Floyd Mayweather. I love the Diaz fights. Oh yeah. my god. Always a fun time, man. You know, the characters in the games. What do you think McGregor's got to do to get another title shot? You think that if he just asked for one, he'd get one? I mean, he might. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say one win, right? Yeah. I think Diaz has got to at least have him come off a win, you know? So maybe they do it. Maybe they do it. Try to do a Chandler Connor fight or a trilogy of Diaz. Th that makes the most sense if you're going to get all the money out of, of, of Diaz before he goes out. You know, but then that's a risky proposition for UFC because if Diaz beats Connor and he leaves, then he leaves with all the money and all the clout, and then Connor's still here coming off another loss. Mm -hmm. So they might not do that because of the potential risk there. Well, you think it's an easy fight for Chandler and McGregor? I think it's a. Phew, although we always say that it won't get out of the first round, and then you get Derek Lewis and Ngana that goes the, the distance, you know. So mm -hmm. you would think it wouldn't come out of the first round, right? Yeah. One of those guys lands big and takes the other one out, but you know. I swear every fight that we think that's going to happen. Gaethje Chandler. Nobody thought that was going to go the distance. Yeah. It did. It a crazy fight. But All right. Let's roll on your side facing towards me. That check left hook from Gaethje was nasty. Everything from Gaethje is nasty, bro. Mm -hmm. That's a nasty human, man. Let's go the way to me here. The leg kicks, the cab kicks. I went back and rewatched the Khabib fight. The shots he landed on Khabib. Oh, God. The hooks, like the, the mm -hmm. cab kicks. And then, <laughs> which tells you what a level Khabib was on. Khabib was next level. But to the point where the fights weren't even fun though, because like he just knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, big deep breath and blow it out. Oh. Good. <laughs> right, I'm back this way. That felt good? Yeah. And big deep breath. Oh, oh. All right. 
Good stuff? Yeah, good stuff. You want me to take my shoes off? Nah, you're good. Fresh kicks. Look like they're brand new. They said I keep creasing the J's. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, it's okay, guys. I can buy new ones. Sneak your head fouls. How could you do that? Mm -hmm. I, got, I got more shoes, guys. I wouldn't buy them to, like, not wear them. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. So my truck that never leaves the garage. <laughs> but it's too nice to take on the streets of Albuquerque. Yeah, you never know. I've got about eight cars stolen out of my driveway now. Bro. Yeah. Were you born there too? Yeah. yeah. We grew up playing Little League together in Albuquerque. All right. So, drop your right shoulder down. Mm. <laughs> That's what's going to go right up there. This time, wiggle your right big toe. Yeah. <laughs> oh That's my god. <laughs> the distraction of the wriggle the right big toe got me. Is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> Just a distraction? Yeah, you can only consciously do one motor movement at a time. Really? Yeah. So you can't physically resist me and move your foot. Oh, wow. You can subconsciously do other stuff, but something you're focusing on, you can only do one thing at a time. Hmm. I didn't know that. So if you're focusing on resisting me, you will. Bring this left knee towards your chest, then take it back down, and back up, and down. Top three restaurants in Houston. <laughs> Cultivari, Blue Dorn, and Andy's Cafe. Okay. Top five favorite Houston rappers. <clears throat> Paul Wall. 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 Uh, Dylan. Dylan. <laughs> uh, zero. Yeah, zero. Slim Thug, Bon B. Does Beyonce count? Beyonce I think so. Is there I think so. Top? Beyonce counts. A couple more there. Bon B is an interesting one too because he gets grouped in, but technically Port Arthur. Mm hmm. But definitely Houston scene. Godfather. Mr. Scarface. See this side too. I mean, Travis is huge too. Sure, Travis. huge. But he's not the same genre really, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like a little different, right? Mm hmm. Different time period, obviously, different different style of music. There's a ton of rappers released. Which is crazy. It's like yeah. Kiki, isn't that Paul's favorite? Yeah. Well, Kiki's Paul's favorite. Yeah. Mike Jones. Oh, yeah, me. oh Mike Jones is my favorite girl. <laughs> we, were, we were just laughing. Three, we were like, we don't know each other's phone number. I don't know why I phone number, but I know Mike Jones' phone number. Yeah. <laughs> make it make don't sense. Don't forget that number. Ever. That's right there. that right there. Yep. All right, what, what, are the, what predictions you got for the upcoming season? Who are your teammates that are really going to break through? Hmm. Predictions for the upcoming season. I got a. Uh, I think Kyle Tucker is going to be in the in the top five MVP conversation. He's a stud. He kind of he burst onto the scene last year. I think your Don Alvarez will continue to just rise to elite as he already is. Um, I think Verlander is going to have a big comeback season. I mean, he missed this is he pitched one game in the last two years, but he's just the ultimate competitor. So, I think he'll come back ready to go. He's been training his ass off, so I think he'll be super good. Um, but yeah, I think our team's going to be legit again. I think we'll have the I think we'll have the number one offense in baseball again. I think it's a good prediction. And then for your stat line, I'm gonna go uh, 278, 44, 122. I love it. Back to back to form, baby. Back to form. So draft him on your fantasy teams. I'm telling you, it's gonna pay off. My guy is spot on. It's gonna pay off. <laughs> Let's go ahead and set up. New career high in homers. Let's go hand on hip like this. So I'm gonna step right there. Pull that elbow back. Good. Okay. So that was easy. Here. I'm gonna go right there. Cool. Yeah. That was easy. 
All right, yeah. let's go both hands right here. And bring your elbows down a little bit. Look up just a tad. <laughs> Flex that shoulder. What are you weighing right now, man? Two hunch. Yeah, mm -hmm. I say. Mm -hmm. Put yeah. them. Got that mature muscle right there. Got back to. Hey, look at these forearms, man. These are massive forearms. I don't know about that. He's <laughs> getting that grown man strength now. That's what I'm saying. The power production's about to go up. Finally, finally. I mean, it was you already there. It. Yeah. Just need to be. Do you not have a silver bat? Be healthy again. Yeah, we do. How many people got those? Not too many, folks. So. Another, another New Mexico guy got one. Same year, Garver. Oh, that's right. Mitchell Garver. That's right. Yeah. I knew that. LaCueva guy. LaCueva guy. Mm -hmm. There's a few of us. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys go subscribe to his YouTube channel. I'm going to drop it below. He's got all kinds of cool stuff over there. Uh, what's the video you got that has the most views on your channel? We, uh, it's the umpire video. We dress up as, uh, me and a few of my buddies dress up as umpires. We go prank some, uh, kids playing in a, a travel ball game here in town. Make some little league kids uh, excited. Yeah. It was, it was oh my awesome. God. Oh, you know, it was crazy. That's pretty cool. That's we pretty blew cool. every call in the video. It was awesome. We, we literally <laughs> missed every single call. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So go check out his channel um, and probably take a, a quick tour right now. Look at some of his awards and then I'm going to eat some salsa. So how do you feel? Feel great. Yeah. Feel great. Feel awesome. Loose, feel loose, loose, ready to go. Ready I got a workout in. Yeah, I'm ready to go get my workout in. We got a recovery day today, uh, conditioning and re recovery, some some balance, and now I feel like ready to tackle it. Like ready for a flying crane kick. Oh yeah, there it is. What, what is it? Adis doesn't Adesanya do something like that after he wins? I don't know. Something. He does all kinds of stuff. He does the machine gun. Oh yeah, the dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you name it. All right, let's go take a look. Awesome. My first All Star game jersey. I won. All-Star Game MVP that uh, that year, and this is the jersey from the season. It was this was from the game uh, that we did. I uh, got my hundredth RBI, hundredth run, first time in the big leagues, and my fiftieth double. This is the lineup card from when I won uh, All-Star Game MVP in 2018. This was second team All MLB. This bullshit, but it's whatever. Um, <laughs> This is all, these are the Roberto Clemente nominee awards from uh, the last three years for the work that our charity has done in the community with autism. It's another one. This was uh, best postseason moment was a walk off in Game Five of the World Series. Um, What's the charity? Bregman Cares. Bregman Cares. Yeah, do a lot of work with kids with autism, and it's been going really well. Nice. We're hoping to open a school in uh, twenty. Uh, 22 here That's in awesome. Houston. This is from actually MLG in New Mexico. Uh, after uh, Maybe on day? college, yeah. August what? 2nd. August 2nd? Is Bregman Day? In New Mexico, yeah. That's pretty good, man. From college, yeah. Got your own day and your face on the salsa. Yep. <laughs> this, was, uh, this was my first big league hit, the lineup card. We played in Detroit. Nice little uh, flare in the center field. I started off my career 0 for 18, so this was a big one. Took a lot of weight of the world off my back. Take a look at you now. <laughs> this was just competing in the home run derby in 2019. Didn't make it out of the first round. This is 2019 or er, 2018 most valuable Astro. This was the actual home run ball from the All Star game in 2018. 100 RBIs. These are these two balls are the signed from the whole All Star games in eighteen and nineteen. All the guys on uh, on the American League team. This was uh, this is actually Verlander's no hitter, and he signed it here. Everyone on the team got one. Um, his third career no hitter. Just on the floor. Yeah, this is the, uh, <laughs> this is the silver slugger. It's just on the floor. This is the silver slugger. The next one counts. This one's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, so like it shows here, everybody who won the Silver Slugger this year, and catcher Mitch Garver from New Mexico there right go. there. Yeah. Back to back, 505. Get the bat, get the bat, get the bat, get the bat. Here's our uh, player of the month. Signature is faded, B-E-A-U. You can put an X if you want to make it Louisiana special. Mm -hmm.
Woo, looky there. This one new bat right here that they just are having us try out changes like the where the weight is in the bat with the big knob. It's like it moves the center of mass down and makes it feel lighter. Yeah, that feels weird. It does, right? Yeah. Compared to that one? Yeah. That one's weight feels way heavier, right? Right. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Relax. <laughs> you sent me the bill, man. <laughs> Oh, good. All right, we're both gonna do a scoop of the Breggy Bomb Salsa, tequila lime flavored, hot, also made by Sadie Salsa. You got the man right there on the on the label. But when you grew up, you're like, you know what I want to be when I grow up? I want to have my face on a bottle of salsa. That's what I was thinking when I when I uh, when I was born. I was like, that's what I want to do. You know? You know? Honestly, it was just like a it was just like a fun thing for us to do because we love salsa growing up in New Mexico. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden it's like, wow, everybody else likes the salsa too. This is great. Let's keep making it. Let's get more flavors going. Let's get hot, not as hot. We got three more flavors in the works, so. I've always been jealous of the guy on the Tapatio bottle, you know? <laughs> it's like, you know, one of these days I'm gonna be on there with a cowboy hat. All right, let's crack this thing up. We're gonna do a scoop. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Is that hot? Oh. <laughs> oh that's hot. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have gurgled with it. So, so you can say that spice is the greatest way to Texas? <laughs> this is New Mexico approved. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. It's probably better with the chip. I think I would recommend if you get this, eat it with chips, but you know, I was a little skeptical about... If it would be hot enough? Yeah, you know, for New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hot enough. <laughs> Good job, guys. Oh, this is... <sighs> you got me sweating. That's good for me, I love it. Uh, I'll, I'll probably just start eating with a spoon, personally. Damn. He, he really is true, true New Mexico, New Mexico true. Let's go 505. Let's go 505. All right, guys, go show him some love. Buy you some salsa. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel. It's still blowing up. We'll catch you guys on the next one. See you guys.